Uh, greetings. I hope this uh, video may be a blessing towards you and uh, might be of some help as I talk about um, something that, that's on my heart. Um, it's some truths are very hard to um, come to realization, uh, specific truths about yourself and your own fallen nature. Um, in it's stuff I'm about to say I, I understand. It it might be hard for a lot of people to comprehend as it as it as it was for me. Um still is somewhat. We we have limitations and trying to come to terms with that is uh, very hard and to know that we're limited by the time, energy and resources that is that we're given, it's given unto us from God and to use that to the best of our ability is um, something that could be quite challenging in itself. Um, you have you have only a, a limited amount of time of how many people you can interact in a day and you're also limited about the amount of bonds you can form um, with people because it takes time and energy like a plant to form bonds but an awesome part that I realised and I've come to realise this the painful way in order for a bond to flourish it needs both people to partake in it both people to um, invest um, or people to sacrifice but also communication is very important in the fact that um, when it comes to me, um, I I was bought with a price, um, with the precious blood of, of Christ, and my my mission in life is to share the gospel, is to be a light unto others, and to be life unto this world that is dying, that is dead, and I, I'm on a narrow path, and I cannot be. I cannot compromise it for the sake of form, forming bonds of people in the world or uh, unbelievers of people in darkness as light can't have fellowship in darkness because all that end up happening is that these people drag me into the abyss with them and I always see that I, so I have no desire in my heart to um, form bonds of people if it's not beneficial for themselves if they so choose to go in circles and they choose to continue to have like a fixed mindset attachment to the world, that is uh, on them. But I should not take, I should not be a, a part in it or, or take part in it. I would be of the sport and help them, give them advice and help and love towards them. But no way shall I be a part in it or take part. Um, and the consequences of that is I will have more of a lonely existence than so be it. Because... Um, my walk of Christ is more important to me. Sharing the gospel is more important to me than the people I'm perishing than for me spending an hour, two hours a day just just engaging in the world, um, in merged in the world. So even before the Lord saved me, I, I a lot of these things I had no desire on my heart to do anyway. So in a way that makes it easier for me. Um, but I do have a desire to have bonds with people um, but I desire to have a bond with someone that's foundation is built on Christ then because all the bonds is built on either tree and that collapses because I've witnessed it in my life I've seen friends who had friendships for like five, three, four, six, seven years and the foundations the bond was built on was crumbling and then they did not see it and it just like disintegrated and then they were so shocked that it disintegrated because you either had one person who put in all the effort to nudge that bond and the other person just benefited from it and over time the other person might become better on things because the foundation was built on Christ there was no gap in love, there was no uh, willing to solve the other person there was very people who were willing to solve um, t other things get involved, money to the projections and um, yeah so um, I, I, my desire is to to, to be a light unto the world um, I, I die to self every day um, and I do that for my own benefit um, to help me grow um, and also to protect me from the sword so um, yeah but my, my advice to you is to when you're forming bonds of people to make sure it's reciprocated beforehand and that the person is actually interested in to get to know you getting to grow with you 
otherwise you're just wasting time, energy and resources that the Lord gives you and you're gonna eventually regret it because bad company corrupts good character and um, it's, it mentions scriptures not to be unlikely yoked and that goes for Christian where an unbeliever but even when unbeliever went an unbeliever if you have like a desire a set goal in life and if the person doesn't share the same goals the same ambitions or desire to to support you then you know it's, it's not going to end well um because if you're a person that's that's sacrificing all that love energy resources into that and if you're expecting something in return and the person has no desire to do that, then the only person at the end of the day you would blame is you, because you choose who you choose the company you keep. You choose that. You make the decisive uh, choice in that. And whether it's family, friends, loved ones, you make that desire to what amount of energy, time, resources you put into that. And communication is very important. You, you are rightly you are right to ask the person if they actually genuinely want to have a bond with you. Because it's only if it's only out of obligation the person's in your presence, it's better that they not be in your presence in the first place. Because I would, if even had a son and daughter, I would want their friends to want to desire to be in their presence, to want desire to know them. Otherwise, the the the, the, the being each other's presence is like I know it's that the desire to put the needs of the other person above themselves. If they have no desire to do any of these things, then they've they've no they've no reason to be in each other's presence because it's all just going to end it's going to end the disaster in the end anyway so there's many people they get very confused and puzzled why like people why they can't form friendships uh, but if you're not putting any effort or energy into forming it that's one issue but is the other person willing to do likewise as well because a one-sided friendship or relationship is is a recipe for disaster and um, the the foundations are already built on crumbling sand but you can't see it because in your mind you think like the foundation is very strong but in reality the foundation has so many cracks but because our hearts are deceitful we can't see those cracks until it's too late and then it just leads to the leads to a lot of pain and suffering and God allows that to happen because he wants you to be drawn to him to realize that you can rely on him and him alone because if you rely on someone else you're going to be deeply disappointed because they have limitations and that's something you have to understand they are limited and once you understand the limitations of the human heart um, you'll be, be more understanding to understand that and your own limitations because anything else is extremely unrealistic and it'll just lead to heartbreak and pain you can rely to someone at some point but it depends on their character um, you should always dissolve how people treat other people because that's a stronger indication of their character if someone uh, gossips about other people, if someone uh, is very angry, rude, or um, consumed in wrath or pride around others, don't, don't think that they themselves will not do that unto you. Um, so an indication one's character is how to treat others. Um, and it's about understanding that with the fallen state, but if there's a consistency of that, and if there's no like repentance, like sorry without repentance means nothing. If someone is sorry but they don't turn away from the wicked ways, then they're, all they're going to do is use the sorry as a weapon to like either know the conversation, so you, they do something bad, they say sorry, and they're going to go back doing that again. Then that sorry me is meaningless, because sorry without actions means nothing. Um, someone can say sorry to me a thousand times, but without repentance it means nothing. And, and God's the same way. Um, he's very forgiven once you repent and come to him, but when you say sorry, just without meaning in your heart you lie to yourself and you lie to god so that's something that's quite serious because you in order for you to be sorry you must fully comprehend of why you're saying sorry in the first place is there repentance in your heart are you dreadfully sorry for the actions you've taken and then you ask yourself is there any way that you can make amends or, or try to the best of your ability try to fix fix things um, all of that the word sorry means nothing Many people nowadays like you sorry and it's more about a reaction or it's a more way just for the, pot, for the person just to make the person feel better or just to cut off, just to put, just leave in the sand and there's nothing done about it. Um, so I, if you're ever in my presence, that don't say sorry to me unless you mean it. Otherwise it's better that you not say anything and I say that for anyone.
like the, 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 we live in the era of that that the words people use words and that there's no meaning behind them because they lie to them they lie when they say it and um, it's difficult for me for me if someone like me because I, I if you say something to me like I've I witnessed many people call themselves Christians and I get very hopeful when someone says they're Christian to me and then after like a couple of seconds talk to them I realize oh no <laughs> um, so I have more respect for someone um, if they're more if more truth from the heart of, of what they call themselves because then they, they, they lie to themselves um, like someone who would be um, you have many people who bar off like the foundations of Christianity um, and yet they deny the very existence of their own God and yet the whole foundations of the life is built upon that if you take away those foundations they, by default they become deeply nihilist you know, happened, I was that way once because uh, they've all position of someone who does not believe in the value of life or does not believe in any the value of life the the sanctity it's the the, the the morality of of right and wrong the indian the thought what you become then is a deeply uh, nihilistic uh, sadist uh, uh deeply uh deeply just wicked to your core that there's no light in you and that is the thought position of anyone that believes there's no like a value in life or value in anything and that's the default position of someone that's outside of God. That by default, that is the default position. But strange enough, they would take the values of God himself because we're creating God's image. And they can't help that. Um, or only someone who really denies their own attention. To, uh, that, that, that Some that denies have a soul. Some that denies they have internal swords. Some that denies a living soul. Some that denies they're creating the image of God. Someone that denies like the, the creative hand of, of existence of God. Someone that denies all these things. Their default position is just complete nihilism. To, to a point where they will kill someone and they won't bat an eyelid. They have no emotion, no regret. They, they, they'll just see people as a clump of cells, clump of stardust. And so that, that they'll be the most dangerous people on the planet because they have no fear of God in them. They have no fear of what's happened to the soul because they have no fear of the consequences in this life, let alone the next, because they don't value their own life. And that's what makes them extremely dangerous because they don't value their own life, they don't value all lives. Um, so that they, they are, they are completely the most dangerous type of people on the planet um, if, are ones that do not feel God because there's no accountability in what they do. They'll lie to you and they'll justify kind of white lies or saying that, you know, so they justify lying so that makes them dangerous so you can't trust them. You don't trust anyone that lies a lot. But yeah. You know, if someone lies to some about someone else in your presence, then that's a quick foundation that you shouldn't rebuild your relationship or friendship on someone that has that lies. Um that is not truthful because then you can't rely on them. <laughs> someone that's consistently over time you can see consistently that that's the best way you can like spend time in someone's presence. Many people jump into relationships and they don't even form bonds with the person first, which to me is utter madness. Uh, you kind of just form bonds with someone and then you expect to somehow like it to work out. And it's just, it's just, it's, again, it's just, it's just gonna end. It's not gonna end well. Um, so my advice is to spend time nurturing and bonding things. Make sure you have someone that has similar values to you, very important, but someone that's willing to uh, follow you in the, the pathway that you're going. Uh, in life, that your desires, your ambitions, that they're willing to follow you. Uh, otherwise, then it's just best that you um, don't form attachments to them. Yeah. Uh, thanks for watching this video.